Big time weekend, and of course, Harris, you have your NBA I power do. rankings. It's a good time to go through these because, of course, mm -hmm. you know, we're just wrapping up the midway point. Have a, and have a note on our little team cards here about what that specific team needs to do in the second half Perfect. to in order to continue being successful. So. All right, let's get to it. Number 10 in Harris's power rankings for the NBA will be the Washington Wizards. Harris, what do we make of this squad? The, well, this is a weird team because, look, John Wall's currently out. But since John Wall has been out, he has started a couple feuds inside the team, one notably with their center, Marcin Gortat. They had to have like a private meeting. There was all these problems with uh, that he thought that Gortat was talking smack and that John Wall was saying that he doesn't do anything. Like, this is the last thing that this team needs is locker room problems coming from the franchise player and John Wall. Look, just stop, stop. Like, just relax. Like, you have a decent team. You're going to go to the playoffs. There's no need for, for inner team fighting. Give them a little while. I, I think this team is fine. But, again, it's, it's like we said in my uh, original power rankings. Th this team just isn't as good as the Celtics or the Raptors or the Cavs. It has a cap on them. John Wall being the best player in your team, you can really only go so far. And it's a shame because he's a great player. But it, it, it's just hard to see them winning a championship with John Wall as the best player on the whole team. Washington Wizards checking in at number 10 in our power rankings here. Let's check in with number 9 now, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Greek Freak and Company. Yeah, and it kind of comes down to just letting Giannis do what he does. Like, don't change anything that you're doing. Continue to let Giannis eat. Let Eric Bledsoe set people up on offense and let him dice up people. Well, he's been playing great defense recently. Let the team grow. Let Jabari Parker come back and get his legs under him. He was great in his first couple games back so far. If, if they can really thrive as, as a total offense with Jabari Parker, I, I said it last time I was on again, this is a team that could easily upset someone in the first round. Easily. They could easily walk into Cleveland and take a game and win two or three at home. Definitely. There's no doubt in my mind that this Bucks team could, could upset someone in the Eastern Conference uh, playoffs, especially with Jabari Parker. Be afraid of the Bucs. The fear, fear the deer, as they like to say. I, I, I'm a believer in the Bucs. I think they're going to go places. Well, they sit number six on mm -hmm. the Eastern Conference standings behind the Pacers, the Wizards, I, the Cavs, I think they're better than the Pacers. I think the Pacers are playing way above their pay grade. And the same thing with the Wizards. I think you're going to see the Wizards take a big second-half fall. And I think the Bucs, now that Jabari Parker's back, Look, they're 18th in the NBA in, in overall offense. That's going to improve with, with Jabari Parker yeah. coming back. I would expect them to get into the top half of the NBA in those numbers. They've been playing great basketball since Jabari Parker's come back. I want to say that they've won like seven of the last ten or so. So watch, watch, watch out for the Bucks. So you could see them kind of being a disruptor yes, type of team. Yes, absolutely. The this, this, you should, if you are any, to, for instance, let's say they go, let's say uh, Gordon Hayward doesn't go back from the Celtics and they have to play the Bucks in the first round. The, the Bucs could easily steal two games in Boston, easily, and then win two at home. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that this Bucs team, they have the potential to beat any team in the Eastern Conference in a playoff series, but it's just a question of are, can they actually do it. They, they have the ability to do so, but they have a lot of things to work through with this team, and I, I still think that defensively they have some problems as well. I think they need to get their guard rotation down a little bit better, but as of right now, things have started to come together since they've gotten rid of Jason Kidd, which isn't surprising because Jason Kidd isn't very good. So there are the Milwaukee Bucks at number nine. Number eight now, the oh. Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah, and here we go. So I can already tell you what's gonna happen with this team, Cam. Carmelo Anthony is going to try to retake control over this team oh, no. because this is just what Melo does. And, and it, it's, it's good for Melo because that's just kind of player he is, but it's going to be bad for the Thunder. Don't let Melo retake control. You finally have gotten something working. You've been able to beat the Warriors twice this year. Don't change anything. If they're gonna do, if they're gonna win anything this year with this roster, it's gonna run through Paul George and Russell Westbrook. It's not gonna run through Carmelo Anthony. Let him be your super shooter off the bench. He's been playing great basketball recently. Just if I had another thing for the Thunder, like I just said, don't change anything. This is how you're going to win. They have shown that they can easily, not easily, excuse me. They've shown the best possible ability to beat the Warriors over any other Western Conference team so far. Don't change anything. Don't change anything. Don't change anything. Keep playing the ba brain of basketball you are. I don't care where they are in the standings. They're going to be a force in the playoffs. Are you hearing things? Are you reading things that suggest that perhaps Melo wants to have a bigger role? I I'm saying this. is that we started off with the first half of this season, or at least the first half of the, of the 
you know, first half of the season, yep. that Melo wanted to be the number two guy on this team over Paul George. LOL. And then, exactly. And then the second half, he kind of filtered into his more super shooter bench role. But if they start losing games, Melo's going to try to take it on to himself to bring the team back. And that's not a, that's not a diss on Melo. He's still a great player, and it's good for him that he wants to do that. But this is Russell Westbrook's team. This is Paul George's. He is Paul George's Batman to his Robin. You know, at this point, Melo, you're Alfred. Be Alfred if we're sticking with the Batman, Robin, you know, whole thing. Fair. Stay with that. All right. So maybe we'll have another Marvel uh, Yeah, I know. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll come up with more superhero references. I'll keep going with that. Oklahoma City Thunder at number eight. Let's take a look at number seven in the power rankings here. The Cleveland Cavaliers and Harris, I'm... <laughs> Saying it right here, right now, I think that trade deadline did wonders for them. It, it did do wonders, but I, look, they still don't play defense. I, I'm sorry. Look, they can score again. Great. The offense looks like it's working. Like, great. The reason that, look, the problem wasn't the players in the first half. The problem was they had no chemistry because they filtered the roster 20 times. So yep. blame the front office on that. And then also blame the coaching staff because Tyron Lue is a terrible coach. So they, get, they bring in all these young players and they filter in and out of the roster. What there is right now is just LeBron is reengaged. That's all that's happened. It hasn't, these new players that they brought in aren't necessarily better than the guys they used to have. But LeBron is like back. Exactly. He's just trying again. That's what's so wild about this. The, the, the overall team to me hasn't changed. The amount of chemistry hasn't changed. There's still no chemistry on this entire team. The coaching staff is still terrible. The starters still don't play defense. The only thing that has changed is that LeBron James is trying again, which is every, which is the most important thing that they got, could have come from the trade deadline for the Cavs. But if the starters still don't play defense, if, if the bench still has problems, they're going to get roasted by the Raptors in the playoffs, mm. which I can't believe I'm actually saying. It all revolves around what can they do on defense. They're still terrible. They still have one of the worst net ratings in the entire NBA. Until they can prove that they can play defense, I'm not putting them in the top five. I'm not doing it. So the Cleveland Cavaliers are at number seven. We'll talk about it. LeBron later and yeah. where he could be headed in 2018 mm -hmm. in the offseason. Let's take a look at number six in our power rankings now. The Minnesota Timberwolves. Harris, you said they needed the all-star break, so what do we need to look ahead to? Use the bench. Oh, my God, use the bench. Please, Tom Thibodeau, use your bench. You have Car you've all these great starters and Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler and Wiggins, but it was so apparent heading into the all-star break that they were all exhausted and dead tired. Mm. I'm not saying that Jimmy Butler missed the All-Star game because he was sick because maybe he's overtired, but Jimmy Butler might have gotten sick because he's completely overworked as a person. Like, just please use the bench, Tom Thibodeau. Please rest your starters. Save them for the playoffs. You're already going to make the playoffs. There's no need for you to grind your way through the regular season. You're going to end up as a top five seed. You're going to end up with some sort of home field, home court advantage in the playoffs. Use your bench, please. Please. Tyus Jones has been fantastic this year. So they have the depth. Right? Use your players. It's insane. I've never seen any. Well, actually, no. I have seen something like this. It was when Tom Thibodeau was the head coach of the Bulls. Use your bench. <laughs> Minnesota Timberwolves are at number six. Let's get to the top five now. And this team actually has less wins, one less win than the Timberwolves. The San Antonio Spurs, one of the best coach teams out there. One of the best coach teams, but boy, do they need Kawhi Leonard back. It, 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 they've started to stagnate now towards the, end, uh, towards the end of the first half where it kind of started being apparent that maybe LaMarcus Aldridge isn't enough to win us a championship, which, you know, fun fact, anyone could have told you. <laughs> so Kawhi Leonard needs to come back, and he needs to come back soon. And I think that if this Spurs team kind of continues on the track that they're going, look, you can't be 27th in the NBA in offense and win, no matter how good your coach is. So if Kawhi comes back and he's fully healthy, this is a team to fear in the playoffs. But I, I wonder, you know, I look at this roster, and obviously, you know, you, you look at the rest of the rosters around the Western Conference, and obviously Greg Popovich is kind of worth a superstar. So it's Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Aldridge, and Popovich. Yeah. But I, I just wonder if the roster as a whole simply isn't good enough to beat the Rockets or to beat the Warriors. I, I'm just, I'm a little worried that this might be the year where coaching just isn't enough. 
Well, they've lost their last three here. So, yeah, so, I mean, I'm getting going worried. Into the break. I'm, I'm worried and about now it. Now they got to reset a little bit, see what they can do. So the Spurs are at number five in our power rankings. Let's go to number four now. The Boston Celtics, a team you know very well, Harris. Oh, what do God. they need to do? They need to start break. praying that Gordon Hayward returns this season because that is the only way they are going to make it to the finals. It, look, it, it they've been playing great basketball all year, but look, they ran out of steam towards the end of the first half. They were grinding, absolutely grinding their way on defense. But over the overall exhaustion of the team has been absolutely apparent to me. So, look, they've gone down to a lot of teams, you know, 20 points plus. They actually lead the NBA in wins when they're down by 17 plus points. They have like eight or nine wins this year when they're down by that many points. But the problem is, is that they'll go up against these teams. They'll play good defense, but the offense isn't there to match. So they'll fall behind 10, 11, 12 points by the middle of the second quarter. And you can only come back and win so many of those games. That's where they need Gordon Hayward. That's where they need someone on offense to step up. Jason Tatum is a fantastic rookie. Jalen Brown has made huge strides. But these are still first and second year players going against the Cleveland Cavaliers, going against the Toronto Raptors, who, who's, first and se who's second and third options on offense are not rookie or sophomore players. So they need to continue to move the ball on offense. They need need Gordon Hayward to come back, and it'll also strengthen that second unit, which at this point just has not been able to get the job done. What's the offense. latest on Hayward? What are you hearing? The latest on Gordon Hayward is that, look, he is shooting, he is rehabbing, he is fine. He could come back by March. He could. He could come back by the end of March, early April. There's a 100% possibility that he could. And to be totally honest, they haven't put him on injured reserve or they haven't shut him down for the whole season. So he could, in theory, come back for the playoffs. It's really just a question at this point if the Celtics want him to come back, which they probably will. I, I think you're going to see him out there. And also Kyrie Irving actually said some very nice things about Gordon Hayward during the All-Star break, saying that he misses him a lot, that he can't wait to have him back, about there, back out there on the court. I know he can only obviously say that, but... Uh, it, it will be great to see Gordon Hayward back in the court soon. Celtics are at number four. Number three now, the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Man, this is weird to see. It is weird to see, but man, they've been playing amazing basketball. The new brand of basketball that they've been playing is absolutely spectacular. I love your note, by the way. Change, Change nothing. nothing. Keep doing exactly what you're doing. Dwayne Casey is putting up a fantastic season as their head coach. He has been, the, the whole team has been stellar. Kyle Lowry's been been not great statistically, but as an overall leader to the team, he's been better. Uh, you know, uh, DeMar DeRozan is putting up a career season. He should be a dark horse MVP candidate, to be totally honest. He's been fantastic. Uh, OJ Anubia has been great on both sides of the ball as their star rookie. Look, this Raptors team needs to be feared in the playoffs. But I will say this, and I said this last time I was on the cam show, I don't care what they do in the regular season. Show me in the playoffs. This has been, this has been their whole thing. For three to four years now, they play great in the regular season. DeMar DeRozan puts up great numbers. Kyle Lowry's a great, great leader, blah, 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 blah. And then they go to the playoffs and they shoot a combined 25%. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it anymore. Show me in the playoffs that you can win something. Transition. Please. Regular season I, I the need it. I want it. I want the Raptors to be good, but they get in their own way a lot. All right, so there they are at number three. And the top two we go. Number two, the Houston Rockets. And James Harden. <sighs> Chris Paul, yeah, you know the drill. And yeah, and look, look at my third note. Keep Chris Paul healthy at all costs. I don't care if you have to shut him down for the entire second half of the season. Wow. I don't care. Make sure that he is 100% healthy for the playoffs. That should be your only concern. You're going to be one of the top two seeds in the West. That is already solidified. You're going to have home court advantage. That's already solidified. Do not push Chris Paul. If he has like, if he nicks up his ankle, sit him for a week. If he pulls his hammy, sit him for a month. A I don't care. A hangnail. Put him out for an IR. I don't care. Make sure that Chris Paul is healthy at all costs. Because when Chris Paul and James Harden on the court at the same time, they have lost two games this season, Cam, in 28 tries. They are 26 and two when Chris Paul and James Harden are on the court at the same time. That is absolutely outrageous. Keep him healthy, please. I want them to beat the Warriors. 
All right, so the Houston Rockets are at number two. I guess Chris Paul has oh, to stay healthy. Please That's stay healthy. God, he, this has been his whole problem is that he'll be great for the regular season and then nick his ankle in the playoffs and be hampered and can't do anything. Please keep him healthy. Please. Let's go to number one. I think you know who it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Golden State Warriors and Harris. I mean, if there is a time to kind of dethrone the Warriors, I think it's this year. It is, but it isn't. They, what they need to do, they need to adopt the Spurs uh, moniker. Rest your starters on back-to-backs. Mm. It, the, it, this point for the Warriors, does it really matter if you're the one seed in the Western Conference? Does anyone really care? No. The, the, the Miami Heat during the LeBron James Big Three era, Big three era didn't actually finish Earth first in the Eastern Conference all that much. I think they actually only did it about twice. Mm. So it doesn't matter. Rest your starters. Rest Steph Curry. Rest Draymond Green. Rest Kevin Durant. They will thank you in the playoffs. They've been playing so much basketball over the past, what, three to four years. They need to start resting these guys. They've been playing so many minutes. Let them rest, especially on back-to-backs. If you have to do a back-to-back -back where you're in Houston one night and you have a back-to-back -back in Denver, that is almost an instant loss going to Denver on a back-to-back. Rest your starters. Don't push these guys. You know you're amazing. You know you're the best team of all time. You don't need to crush your team in the regular season. And I think that Steve Kerr knows that, and I think he's going to. You're going to see a lot less games of all of the big four starters for the, for the Warriors in the second half of the season. I think they're going to stagnate their minutes a lot. So there's Golden State atop the mountain, and they're at number one in the latest edition of NBA Power Rankings. If you're just joining us on the Cam Rogers Show, Here's a look at the list. So we got 10 through 6 here. Wizards, Bucks, Thunder, Cavs, T-Wolves. Harris, pick one team out of this grouping here that can make the most noise in the postseason. Well, you obviously kind of have to say the Cavs just, you know, with, with LeBron and the, the new team and this and that. Again, you know, I scream that they need to play defense. They do. But, man, don't, don't sleep on the Bucks. When you have a player like Giannis and when you have a bunch of great defensive pieces like they do, they're going to be a scary team in the playoffs. Again, if I'm the Celtics and I don't have Gordon Hayward in the playoffs and I have to face the Bucs, I'm scared. I am very scared, and especially someone who follows the team as closely as I do. That's a terrible matchup. So from what I can tell, there is a bit of a drop-off between number 9 and number 10 here. Am I yes. wrong in oh, that assumption? Yes, huge. The, 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 yes, yes, there is. I, I know that the Pacers and the Wizards have a better record than the Bucs. I get it. I do. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to convince me that they're a better team than the Bucs. The only thing that they have is maybe a little playoff experience more than the Bucs. But, hey, the Bucs were in the playoffs last year, so they, they have their feet under them. Okay, let's go to the top five now. we got the Spurs, Celtics, Raptors, Rockets, and the Warriors here. And I think the most surprising one for everybody out there is certainly the Raptors. But the Spurs, it sounds like you have your fair share of concerns about them despite I, being at five. I do because I, I, this is crazy for me to say, I wonder if Kawhi Leonard coming back is enough. And if, you, if that's where you are as a Spurs team, you should be afraid because if Kawhi isn't enough and you've had all these rumors that him and the organization are, aren't, you know, aren't playing good ball together and you know, we have all these old pieces, man who's going to be on his way out. Tony Parker isn't starting anymore. So there's just this, we're in a big area of transition for the San Antonio Spurs right now. And I wonder if this is the last year of the Tony Parker manage nobly era. I wonder if they're going to move on and really try to clean this, the slate next season and start over with a younger roster. I think, I think this is the year that we're finally seeing that come to a head. I know they're third in the West. I get it. But I think it's pretty obvious to anyone that they're not really the same team as years past.